when you're consuming alcohol, you are quite literally poisoning your body. And you are poisoning the cells in your body and your brain as well. I think it's one of the few things where if you aren't drinking, then people look at you like, what's wrong with you? One drink of alcohol, no matter which type it is, will impact your sleep. How often would you say you consume alcohol? Ultimately, if I had to recommend a drink mm. to have, it would be... Welcome back everybody to episode 22 of the Clean Kitchen Podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm Kevin. And today we got a controversial Ooh. topic. I guess it's controversial. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really know, uh, but it's alcohol mm. and it's just in time for the holiday season. We're putting this out on Wednesday. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. Ooh. Christmas is just a few weeks away, which is honestly hard to believe, but we're going to talk about alcohol and specifically what it does in your body when you consume it. Specifically, mm. the impact on the gut, the liver, the brain, and then also just your stress hormones in general. Yeah, a lot of people enjoy drinking alcohol, but one thing universally hated is the hangover part yes. that comes with it. So we want to talk about hangovers as well, some truths, some myths about hangovers, and one way to reduce hangovers completely. Yes, yep. This is, that's a tip that I, use, that, <laughs> that I use all the time since yes. I learned about that. And then lastly, we're going to compare all the different types of alcohol and we're going to talk about which one is the quote unquote healthiest option yep. because obviously alcohol isn't the best, which we're about to get into, but there are some healthier options than others. Yep. So yeah, before we get into the healthy, let's start just understanding what alcohol does to your body. Let's, let's start there. Yeah. So first off, before we even go into that, we have to understand that alcohol is a known toxin. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. There's no way to sugarcoat this. It's just when you're consuming alcohol you are quite literally poisoning your body. Mm -hmm. And I don't say this to scare anyone. I I drink alcohol every now and then. Uh, I just want people to fully understand what alcohol is. And as always, the purpose of this podcast is for education and understanding, you know, what you're putting in your body. Yeah. So. Yep, exactly. That's all, all we're focused on here is what you put in your body and understanding it better. Alcohol is one of those things that people put in their body. Yes. Us, us included. Yeah. And then the, ne and the next thing we have to establish before we talk about what happens when you literally take a sip of alcohol is who we're talking about when we, when we discuss these health effects of drinking alcohol. And it's the chronic drinkers. And when I say chronic, that can mean uh, someone consuming alcohol 7 to 14 drinks per week. Okay. But when I say that, you know, that can be one to two drinks a night, mm -hmm. maybe a glass of wine before bed. That can be you know, three or four drinks on the weekend. So like maybe you have three drinks on Friday and four drinks on Saturday or something like that. And that can also mean, you know, someone's like, oh, I only go out once a week, mm -hmm. but you're having, you know, seven to eight drinks on every, every Saturday night. Yeah. That's still technically a chronic drinker. Yeah. So seven to 14 drinks on average per week. It doesn't sound like a lot when you say it. Yeah. Seven to to 14 can, can add up quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but as we'll talk about, that just defines you as a, as a chronic drinker, which has some certain impacts associated with it. Yeah, even if you're just having, you know, one beer after you get home from work yeah. before bed, you, you, you don't really think anything of it. Yep. It adds up because you're drinking that's it every it. day. Exactly. So that's mainly, I guess, what we're talking about when we're, for, for this podcast episode, yes. we're, yep. we're referring to these chronic drinkers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the facts. Now, Kevin, yes. let's talk about what happens in the body when you take a sip of alcohol. Yeah, and we're going to talk about some medical terms here, some some technical terms, but we will break it down so that anyone, no matter your your level of um, medical understanding, can, can really digest this information. Yep. But it, it starts with what happens when alcohol comes into your body. Alcohol, the chemical that we are drinking, is called ethanol. Mm -hmm. That ethanol cannot be digested by our body. So it needs to be converted to another chemical. Because it's a to it's a poison. It's, it's a, a poison. toxin. Yes. So our body can't do anything. Exactly. Else. It has to convert it to something else. Got it. What it converts it to is another chemical called acetaldehyde. Mm -hmm. Acetaldehyde, unfortunately, is actually worse <laughs> than ethanol. Okay. So our body can't do anything immediately with the ethanol. So it has to convert it to something it knows it can convert to something good. That, okay. That's something that intermediary is acetaldehyde. Okay. And so at that point, then the body's like, okay, I, I have converted poison to poison, but at least I can convert this second poison into something useful. And that third thing that it gets converted to is acetate, okay. which acetate is actually energy for our body. Got it. So it goes ethanol, acetaldehyde to acetate. Okay. I'm following you. Okay. You're with me so far? Yep. And then your body can actually use that acetate as fuel within your body. 
All of that conversion that happens, that happens in your liver. That's why people commonly associate ah. drinking alcohol with, with your liver. And if you drink too much, you can have long-term liver impacts yeah, to it. Fatty alcohol, uh, what is it? Fatty alcohol liver disease? Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's some, it. That's some, it. Something like that. Yes. So the liver plays a key role um, in this this conversion Fatty process. liver disease, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fatty liver disease. I'm thinking of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's like you can get it from consuming too much sugar. Oh, okay. okay. But, yeah. This is specific to alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's the the first part. But it's important to understand here that, like Kyle said, you you are drinking literal poison when you consume alcohol. Um, and that does have an, an impact on your body, especially in, in the liver, in the conversion process. Mm -hmm. and, and since it, it is a poison, that alcohol, it is substantially damaging your cells, your, your entire body. It is having an impact on that. Um, so I think that most people know and understand that alcohol is not good for them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but 80% of people in, in the U S at least still do consume alcohol and, and alcoholic drinks. And so the, the question that naturally comes up of that is why do people consume alcohol? Well, it seems like most people consume alcohol to relieve stress mm -hmm. or, you know, get drunk yeah. and forget about their problems, baby. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, even though people are sacrificing feeling lousy the next day and being hung over the next day for, I guess, that short amount of pleasure and... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. People, you commonly, excitement. Yeah, there, there's a rush, I guess, associated with it. Yeah. People, you commonly hear say, "Oh, I just need a drink. I need a drink right now." Yeah. And they're usually it's because they're feeling stressed, they're feeling wound up, and there is a reason that alcohol does relieve some stress. But there are a lot better ways to relieve stress. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, it, it increases dopamine in the body, so mm -hmm. it makes us it makes us feel good, which which we like. Yeah. Um, but it also increases uh, serotonin. <laughs> Uh, aka our, our mood it puts us in a better mood um but it's a it's a short increase and then shortly afterwards it's followed by a long slow reduction in both dopamine and serotonin mm -hmm. so that's why a lot of people you know don't feel too good after they're done drinking later on in the night yeah commonly you'll, you'll see people they'll have that first sip that maybe that first beer first wine yeah and they, they really start to like come out of their skin a little bit and yeah you, you get that first spike of dopamine serotonin and then it kind of just slows down after that. But that, that can also be a reason why people will go for that second, that third drink, is because they're kind of chasing yeah. that first spike. Yeah. And and they will get it to smaller extents, but never as much as that first one. Mm, interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they want to keep they want to keep that. They want to keep that high. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's really hard to do with yeah. alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> so when you when you're surrounded by people, or even yourself, when you're drinking alcohol, you tend to be a little bit more outgoing, mm -hmm. maybe say some things that you wouldn't otherwise say yeah. if you were 100% sober. Why is it that that's happening? Yeah, you're definitely <laughs> more talkative and like you said, outgoing. And it, it's because when you consume alcohol, it's basically messing with circuitries in your brain mm -hmm. and can cause you to be more hyperactive and maybe just start talking and maybe you're thinking less about what you're going to say and it's just everything's just flowing out, out of your mouth and you're just saying what's ever on your mind. Yes. Um, and this, like we just talked about, this this will happen, you know, quickly as you as you increase these dopamine hormones and different and different uh, hormones. But after time, this can decrease and then you may be talking a lot slower or mm -hmm. slur slurring your words or something like that. Yeah. It's funny if, if you've ever been at a place, maybe you're like the designated driver for the night and all your friends are having a good time and they're drinking. Yeah. And Initially, everyone's excited and, and outgoing, but if, if you're the one that's sober five, six drinks later, the conversation, it gets to a point where you're watching it and you're just like, I can't believe like this is what they're talking about <laughs> well, yeah. or, or like they're just talking so slow. Right. Nothing makes sense. Right. And it's, it's really because their their brain activity level is, is decreasing. So you'll, you'll commonly see that after quite a few drinks <laughs> and people that actually drink more, we talk about tolerance a lot with alcohol and they, they've built up almost this kind of tolerance, not in terms of con how much alcohol they can consume, mm -hmm. but in how much it, it keeps their energy level high. So people that drink more can stay at that peak energy level longer, which oh, is really interesting. Very interesting. So if you know someone that maybe drinks more than, than the average person, they can keep going and, and they almost have this extra energy. Hmm. And I was like, how are, how are you still so energized? I'm like ex effectively exhausted yeah. after drinking. And it's because they've built up this tolerance in their brain and body that 
the number of drinks does not lead to that steep decline as much for them. Interesting. That makes sense. Yeah. I definitely, I, I know a lot of people that, that are like that and they'll mm-hmm. just drink, 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 and they're full of energy all mm-hmm. night long. Whereas yes. me, you know, I have a couple drinks, I'm feeling good, but then like, I'm done. Like, yeah. <laughs> two, two to three drinks in and I'm just done. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. Yes. And I'm like, how do they have this energy? Yes. I mean, I'm thinking of like a bachelor party Yeah, where there's always alcohol there. Of course. And you'll, if you watch like the people that are at the, uh, at the bachelor party, there's like three or four that'll just pass out at some point. Yeah. They'll wander off to bed or fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a three or four that just keep going. Yeah. And that. Uh, all I'm right. normally in the middle where I don't want to go to bed because yeah. I like to see what, what happens. Of course. <laughs> it's entertaining. Yeah. Um, but I don't have the energy that those other yeah. people do. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun to see that. But that's that's what's happening. So we just talked about how alcohol can affect your mood. But what exactly is going on in the brain when you yeah. consume alcohol? Congratulations to all of the winners of the giveaway from last mm-hmm. week. You should have received a $50 gift card to Whole Foods or a Visa gift card if you don't have a Whole Foods near you. So thank you so much for leaving those reviews and for participating in the giveaway. For those that aren't subscribed on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode every single Wednesday. And also leave a review on Apple Podcasts if you are enjoying this podcast. Leave a rating on Spotify and share this with a friend if you found it helpful. Now back to the show. Yeah, so to start, your your brain is made up of a bunch of neurons. Mm -hmm. In your brain, you have different regions. One of the regions of your brain is your prefrontal cortex. That's in in the front of your brain. Yep, I've heard of that. Yep, it's a a popular one. And the reason that this matters in this context is because your prefrontal cortex is responsible for thinking, planning, and suppression of impulse behavior. Mm. All of those things fit well with alcohol. (laughs) Um, That's that's why you'll commonly see people that have been consuming alcohol for, for a little bit do things that they would otherwise not do or th- do say things they otherwise yeah. wouldn't say. Yeah. Uh, uh, another reason that you tend to, when you're at a party, it gets louder and louder and louder. One one reason is, is probably the music yeah. that is loud. But the other reason is that people just lose the ability to understand how loud they're talking. Hmm. So you'll, you'll commonly see people kind of just start raising their voice more and more because they just have no idea how loud they're right, talking. Right. Maybe next day you wake up with a sore throat. Always. Always, yeah. <laughs> That's because you, you've basically been yelling for the past three yeah, hours. Yeah, that makes sense. And you didn't know. So basically all what you just said was basically your thinking, your planning, and all of that just kind of goes out the window yes. when you're intoxicated. Yeah, the because, again, alcohol is a poison. It's important to, to remember that. And you are poisoning the cells in your body yeah. and your brain as well when you consume it. And I assume that there's also a piece of this that relates to black, when people black out. Yes. That's got to be happening within the brain. Exactly. Right? Exactly right. So there's another part of your brain responsible for memory formation and storage. Mm. So when we're, we're having this conversation, there's a part of my brain right now that's storing this in my memory so that I can think back to it mm, yep. another time. Yep. That part of your brain, again, gets shut off when you consume when alcohol. You're interesting. Um, and so that's why people will commonly just black out because yeah. your, your brain that is responsible for storage and memory formation yeah. has turned itself off. Yeah. Uh, because it's basically just trying to stay alive wow. and fight off the poison. Yeah, it's funny because that was such, uh, in college, you know, you, you hear stories all the time like, oh man, I blacked out last oh, night. Oh yeah. And I never really got that. I don't know yeah. if I never drank enough or uh-huh. something, but I never was like, I forget what happened last night. Really? You've never blacked out? No. Wow. That's yeah. good. That's good. There yeah. are some serious long-term health impacts to blacking out okay. consistently. Yeah, no. So you don't, you don't want to black some out. Some of my friends, it's like every weekend or whatever, yeah. they're, they're like, oh, I blacked out last night. I'm like, I, I, I've never really, I've never, that's never really happened to me before. No. And if, um, maybe, maybe sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't know. No. I, I feel like I always, I always, I always remember what happened. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> Do you, there's like there's browning out too. Have you heard of that? No. It's like where you can partially remember what happened. Oh. So like bits, bits and pieces. Yeah, maybe maybe that. Maybe a little. In, I mean, in the, in the in the past. Yeah, yeah, not not more. <laughs> not recently. No. Do you, do you cons- how often would you say you consume alcohol? On average, I'd say maybe once a month. Yeah, maybe once, once a month. Mo- and when you do that once a month, how many? Two to three drinks. Two to three drinks. Yeah. Special occasion. Yeah. Have a couple beers. It's, yeah, it's rarely more than that. Yeah. 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 It, Be- I just, like, I just hate feeling bad the next day. Is that why or is it the taste? Um, 
Well, it's the taste when it comes to, like liquor. I hate liquor. Yeah, <laughs> can't do that. Uh-huh. Be- I mean, beer. I don't mind the taste. I can't say I enjoy it. Wine. I'd say I I enjoy a, mm-hmm. a glass of wine every once in a while. Uh, but it's mainly like the hungover piece. Like it's yeah. in, in no way, shape, or form is it worth it to me. Yeah. Like even if I drink just drink a couple glasses of wine, and you know maybe I'm a little feeling a little good but like not drunk by any means yeah and i'll feel terrible all the next day i'm like that's just not worth it for me yeah to lose a whole day yeah yep at all and a lot of people once you start getting older your ability to effectively process the alcohol takes more time Mm. and so instead of like you're feeling bad for a day you're feeling bad for two days three days you hear people say that yeah as well one night of drinking can ruin the next 48 hours yes yes exactly yeah (laughs) after doing a lot of this research i'm like why am i drinking yeah why am i even doing this yeah it's it's just like built into society. Yeah, um, that it is. You you drink alcohol. Yeah, and that's really the that's that that's the reason I drink in the first place. Mm-hmm. It's when I feel like I have to, like mm-hmm. when I feel pressured to. I never. I don't think in the past like three years. I don't think I've ever sat down on my couch by myself one night and had a glass of wine mm-hmm. or a, a can of beer or something like never. Yeah. You know? <laughs> never it's only it's i only drink alcohol when i have to and when it's social settings yeah and it's like here ha- have a drink have yeah. a drink yeah i mean i remember we work remotely now but in person e- almost every friday in the summer at five o'clock we'd go down to world of beer yeah and as a group you'd you'd get a beer yeah. and you just sit there and talk and it was part of like work that yeah. you would do that yeah and it was almost like you were an outlier if you didn't exactly yeah. i think it's one of the few things where if you aren't drinking if you if you're like oh no i'm not gonna have a beer I'm, I'm okay then people look at you like what's wrong with you yes like you're not gonna drink yeah it's like why Which, do you want me to drink i feel like that <laughs> yeah. yeah i think it's because they the the people that are drinking maybe feel like you're like ruining their fun mm-hmm. like they they want everyone to be drinking with them, and maybe they feel less is less bad if they're if, if everyone else is doing it. Yeah, they're like, oh, you're not drinking, and then like maybe they feel bad about themselves. Yeah, or yeah, maybe they they know deep down that they shouldn't be drinking as yeah. much. But if everyone's doing it, it's fine. Right, and exactly. then then I can I effectively have permission right to drink as much as I want. Exactly, when everyone else is. Yeah. Um, you think about like going to a restaurant. One of the first things they ask you when you go to a, a nicer restaurant is, "What do you want to drink?" Yeah, really, they're they're looking for alcohol, some sort of alcohol for sure. Um, yeah, and do you know why it is that they they want you to no, do that? No, why? So within there's a reason behind it. There's a reason. Oh, okay. So the the reason that a waiter or waitress will ask you what you want to drink right away is because, like we talked about, when you consume alcohol, increases your level of serotonin. And along with that is that impulse behavior that we were, mm-hmm. we were talking about before. Ah. If you suppress your impulse behavior, yeah. you're more likely to buy more. Interesting. Whether that's more alcohol, more food. Yeah. It's like, oh, actually, yeah, you know what? I will take that slice of cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you want dessert? Oh, actually, dessert sounds good. Yeah. yeah. So more alcohol is, is more money yeah. for, for these restaurants yeah. as well. Yeah. So that's be funny. careful out there. I also, ever, I also noticed like if you do have a glass of wine or something or, you know, whatever it is, mixed drink at, at dinner – they always come over and they're like, oh, would you like another one? Yeah. It's not like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Or like yeah. one more? Like you want one more? Yeah. Like, Can I get you another one real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just it's, like, it's not a problem for slide me. slide it in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Um, oh, that's funny. Yes. So absolutely it's an ingrained in culture um, and has a huge role in, in how we process information. Yeah. The next area we want to talk about is how alcohol and stress interact. Tell me a, a little bit more about that process. Yeah. So first, let's talk about cortisol because mm-hmm. cortisol is a hormone. Uh, it's your it's your it's your primary stress hormone, mm-hmm. basically. So cortisol level rise cortisol levels rise when you experience a heightened state of anxiety or stress, and are lowered when you're you're more relaxed. Mm-hmm. So chronic drinkers, these seven to fourteen drinks a week people, uh, they experience increased cortisol when they're not drinking let's say that again in so they're yeah. there so these chronic drinkers mm-hmm. they are experiencing increased cortisol more the, this stress hormone is mm-hmm. increased when they're not drinking that is mind-blowing yeah <laughs> because you know when you're consuming alcohol it's bad like you you, you can get you can get there but a week after you haven't had a drink and your cortisol levels are still impacted by the alcohol because of the yeah because of it yeah and they'll feel more like i mean basically what we just said they'll mm-hmm. feel more stressed and anxious when they're not drinking mm-hmm. 
And then when they consume alcohol, then the cortisol levels drop and they feel more relaxed. Yeah. Stress is, is something we've talked about before mm -hmm. and it's extremely important. We've talked about ways to reduce stress. I, I think just an episode or two ago, we talked about that breathing exercise yes. that you mentioned. Yeah. Um, I actually did that. Um, I got LASIK done. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Last week. Yeah. And I was sitting there and that was a stressful couple seconds. While, while you were there. Yes. While you were literally getting it done. While I was literally getting it done. And I thought back uh -huh. to the, the, the square. Yeah, and the I was box just, breathing. I was doing that in my head and that was all I was focusing on. And that helped. And it helped. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm sure it helped calm you down. <laughs> yeah, it did. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Real wor world example. So that was huge. Um, but stress can just be so detrimental oh, yeah. to your body. So you don't want to do anything that's going to increase the level of stress that you have or, or really almost like the barrier to entry for mm -hmm, stress. Mm -hmm. um, so this alcohol plays a role in a huge role in, in that cortisol level. Okay. So we, we've talked about how at this point, how alcohol impacts your level liver, which is the conversion process. Talked about how it impacts your brain through serotonin, through dopamine. We talked about how it interacts with your levels of stress. Lastly here, we want to talk about how it plays a role in your gut. One of the most important, if not the most important parts of our body. So many, many people know that alcohol can kill bacteria, mm. whether, you know, use it topically if you have an infection or even like hand sanitizer, right? Doesn't that contain yeah, yeah, alcohol? Exactly, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's killing bacteria. Mm -hmm. And when we drink alcohol, it's doing the same exact thing except to our gut microbiome. Mm. So we have good bacteria and bad bacteria in our gut microbiome. And when we consume alcohol, it can kill, yes, maybe some of the bad bacteria, but it's also killing the good bacteria, which can disrupt our gut microbiome and eventually lead to things like leaky gut, which is when, you know, toxins and, and bad bacteria and other negative things are getting into our bloodstream, which can have an impact on our entire body. Yeah. So it's not just limited to the gut now at this point. That right. leaky gut, it allows the bad bacteria into your bloodstream, you said, yes. and can go everywhere. Yeah, it, it can go all throughout your body, but yeah. that can cause health problems anywhere throughout mm -hmm. the body because our, our gut is so incredibly important yeah. and uh, controls so many other things in our body. Yeah. And everything starts with a healthy gut. Yes. Uh, very important. I know you talk about seed a lot. Is The probiotic? That's a probiotic. T tell Correct. me what seed does. So seed is a probiotic. Okay. Probiotic is, is basically good bacteria. Okay. So that's basically just putting good bacteria into your gut. Okay. But it also, and, and many other supplements as well contain this, but it also contains a prebiotic, mm. prebiotic fiber specifically. And prebiotic feeds your good gut bacteria. So they, you know, multiply and, and you get more good bacteria in your gut. Um, but uh, prebiotic fiber can also be found naturally in foods like apples, asparagus, mm. and a bunch of other fruits and vegetables. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, essentially, you're when you take a probiotic, you are putting more good bacteria into your gut to you know improve digestion, improve mm -hmm. your skin health, and it can improve cardiovascular health, improve mm -hmm. your overall immune function, and you know how often you get sick. So it's very, very important. Yeah, and if you're crucial, and if you're consistently drinking alcohol, you're consistently killing off this good bacteria or yes. this good yeah this good bacteria. Yeah. Uh, detrimental. So we've talked about the impact that alcohol can have on, you know, your brain, your gut, all these different things. But I've also heard that consuming alcohol frequently can in increase your risk of cancer. Is there any truth to that? There is. Yes. So specifically breast cancer in women mm. can have the, the largest increased risk when you consume alcohol. And uh, we'll get specific here. So specifically four to 13% increased risk of breast cancer for every 10 grams of alcohol consumed. Okay. And that, that's 10 grams per day. So okay. if you're consuming- what's, Yeah, what's yeah, 10 grams? 10 grams of alcohol. So in the US, that's about um, one beer, one glass of wine, or one shot of liquor. That's about okay. 10 grams, 10 to 12 grams of alcohol. Okay, so basically one serving. Exactly. So this gets back to our chronic drinker. If you're having seven to 14 beers a day, that's you're effectively- A week, a week sorry. <laughs> a week, that's- 10 7 to 14 a day. Yeah. Consult a professional. Exactly. Probably. Yeah. Talk to some, someone um, professional. That is about 10 grams a day if you're having 7 to, to 14 drinks a week. So you're really putting your body at an increased risk of cancer and, and breast cancer being the largest risk there. Okay. Interesting. Yep. So not, not a good thing. Yeah. No, definitely not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. For a variety of reasons. Okay. So let's move on to hangovers okay. then. Yep. How do we prevent this from happening? 
how do we uh, mitigate this in any way? So yeah. start us off. Yeah. So hangovers are the worst part yeah. of, of drinking, For obviously. Sure. But this actually, the first part goes back to sleep. We had mm. a whole podcast on sleep. We actually talked about the impact that alcohol has on your sleep. Yeah. One drink of alcohol, no matter which type it is, will impact your sleep. So it doesn't matter if you're just like, oh, just having a, a glass of red wine at yeah. dinner or right before bed. Yeah. That's going to negatively impact how you sleep, which is how you recover, how your body recovers. Yeah. So that's why one reason why you, you have this hangover is because your body didn't recover appropriately from the night before. Um, so that's the first reason. What about another reason? Another reason that people wake up hungover mm -hmm. and an example of being hung hungover is a very bad headache mm -hmm. is because there's a restriction of blood vessels that tend to occur uh basically as a rebound after a night of drinking mm. and most people will take a tylenol or something like that in the morning mm -hmm. to get rid of their headache but unfortunately there's some research coming out that tylenol can negatively impact your liver mm. which is already very beat up from a night <laughs> of drinking so mm -hmm maybe not the best thing to have. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what can we do to, I guess, mitigate this hangover and not get this bad headache in the first place? Yeah. So it's important to remember again, that alcohol is effectively dehydrating you. Mm -hmm. So a good rule of thumb when you're drinking is to, for every drink of alcohol, you have consume two glasses of water. Cause that's going to rehydrate you in, in, but like in between, in between. Yeah. Um, crown Royal water break. <laughs> that's yeah. What we try and, and oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's so, good that they're advertising that. Yeah. So I, take a little water break. Yeah. Or if you're actually able to get electrolytes, yeah. that's even better. So you could do one glass of water with electrolytes yeah. for every glass of, of alcohol you yeah. consume. I, I, I do try to do water every time I'm drinking. Mm -hmm. Like I always try to have a glass of water. If, yeah. if I'm going to have a beer or something you drink cl a glass of water in between, but I've never done the electrolytes. I definitely want to yeah. try that. No, I've never done that either. Yeah. Um, and it, it's crazy that you need two glasses of water yeah. for one glass of alcohol because yeah. it's dehydrating you that much. Yeah. Uh, but you you do try to have a glass of water? Yeah, yeah, always. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Good. Yeah, I never just try to just drink, drink, drink. Yep. Um, that is good. So there's also some myths and maybe some truths associated with hangovers. One common idea that I, I've heard about getting over a hangover is... In order to get over hangover, you just drink more, mm -hmm. and that that will keep stop it, the hangover. Just keep it going. Yeah, is that true? No, false. No, no, no. <laughs> Very false. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Don't recommend that. <laughs> I know a lot of my friends that used to do that in college, but yeah. I could never do that. No. If I'm hungover, the last thing I want is a sip of alcohol. Yes, that'll just make I don't know about you. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, literally yeah. just throw up. Yep. People yeah. are like, oh, no, just keep it going. I'm like, uh -huh. you are crazy. Yes. Uh, but no, that, that does not that's help, a bad idea. so don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. <laughs> Another idea that I've heard about getting over a hangover is... Cold exposure, oh, something yeah. we've we've talked about a little bit. So, can cold exposure help you get over a hangover? Yes, there right. there actually is some evidence that this can help. Uh, so, when you increase your adrenaline, which is what happens when you expose yourself to very cold temperatures, mm -hmm. uh, this can basically help process the alcohol out of mm. your body faster. Huh. So yeah, it can help. So and it's definitely worth a shot. Yeah, it's like a cold shower. Yeah, after you, you get yeah. up, hungover. Yep. No, that, that could be helpful um, for a variety of reasons, but to, to get rid of alcohol yep. being a big one. Okay, I've, I've also experienced various levels of hungover depending on which type of alcohol I consume. Yep. Is is there any truth to that or is that just because I drank more the other one night than I did another night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's, there's kind of a spectrum of worst to best in terms of how bad your hangover may be hmm. depending on the type of alcohol you're consuming. So from worst to best in order of how a specific type of alcohol may impact your hangover. So the first one you're going to say is the worst. Correct. Hangover. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Worst okay. to best. So worst, we have brandy. Okay. Then red wine. Oof. Rum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you drink a lot of rum? I like rum and coke. That's oh. my go-to wedding drink. Oh, yeah. okay. Interesting. Yeah. Whiskey. Mm. And then white wine. Okay. Gin, vodka, and beer. Okay. All in right. that order. Okay. So if you notice, it's kind of the darker yeah. alcohols are more in the beginning, and then you get to the white wine, gin, vodka, beer, I guess isn't isn't clear, but. Yeah. 
So, uh, so yeah, what's the reasoning there? What's the difference between those? The, yeah, there's something called congeners okay. in alcohol. Mm -hmm. And this basically is just a byproduct. It's these certain chemicals that are produced in the fermentation process, it's just mm -hmm. a, a byproduct in the fermentation process. And it's what gives alcohol its different tastes huh. and yeah, different yeah. tastes. And it's the, the, the distinct flavor that it gives it. So uh, basically the, the ones that I said, you know, were the worst, mm -hmm. those te tend to be higher in these congeners. Oh, interesting. And as you move through that list, it, it like beers is, is much lower. Yep. Yep. So that makes sense. So that, 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 that's, um, thought to be one of the, the main reasons what causes a worse hangover is yeah. the, the amount of these congeners in the alcohol. Yeah. Definitely had some, some bad hangovers. Have you had? Any, any really bad hangovers? Really? Oh, I mean, yeah, in college, really yeah. bad. And what would you drink when you had those? Oh, beer. I feel like I, I feel like I only had beer in yeah, college. Yeah, that was always your go-to. Yeah. Yeah. Never wine, never never really much of a mixed drinker. No. No. Kept it simple. Yeah, kept it simple. Yeah. Yeah, cheap. Yeah. Cheap, yeah. yeah. That's, that's true. <laughs> beer is by far the, the most consumed in college. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But the a, a couple weeks ago when I was in Florida, we went out to a bar and... Uh, to watch Thursday night football. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, I'm on, on vacation, you know, mm -hmm. I'm with the boys. Yeah. Let me, let me get a beer. Uh -huh. And I had one and I ordered two beers, but I had probably one and a half, okay. one, one and three quarters of yeah. beers. Cause I, I just couldn't finish the, yeah. the second one. Tapped <laughs> <laughs> out. Yeah. It's just done. Uh, and the entire next day, I had a terrible headache. No way. Yeah. One and a half? Yeah. I guess because you don't drink that much? I guess. Yeah. And a stomach ache, too. Like I, like almost this this underlying feeling of, I need to throw up. No way. Yeah, the entire day. Oh, man. Yeah. So that'll discourage any drinking. Yeah. If one and a half is, yeah, exactly. is, is that. And then, yeah, so, yeah, not good. So seeing this list, though, where, like you mentioned, you have red wine occasionally yeah where that's so high on the hangover level does that ever would that discourage you maybe like oh maybe i'll, I'll have white wine instead yeah maybe yeah i don't know i feel like when i drink wine i, no I normally don't get like if i have a glass of wine or two mm -hmm. i normally don't get hung over no yeah that's yeah. good that's a good thing and i don't know if there was something else i ate that night that maybe enhanced the hangover or made the uh -huh. hangover worse uh -huh. i don't know but i don't think i've had a sip of beer since then i mean that was only three weeks ago okay. two or three so weeks ago but nothing since then i'm like that made me never want to drink beer ever again <laughs> yeah it'll do that yeah i feel like you hear that a lot people drink and then the next day they're horribly hungover yeah. and then i'm never drinking again yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> and then the next week they're like oh yeah shots yes <laughs> um the worst hangover i've ever had was was red wine by oh far. really oh yeah so seeing this list validates that like a lot you had a lot of red wine a lot of red wine yeah, yeah. it was like a, a mountain weekend trip we yeah had a, a friend's giving type yeah. thing and we had wine all day and the next day we were going home and my, my wife, Brooke, was driving and we had to pull over on the side of the road three times. Oh, gosh. Yeah, just so I could get it out. Oh, gosh. It was, <laughs> that was horrible. Oh, gosh. So this does, it makes me think, okay, because I like wine. Yeah. But I don't have a strong preference. So just for the hangover, I would say I'll just have white wine. White I'm going to have wine. Yeah. I think I just go white, white wine. Yeah. Or I guess a clear liquor. Or a clear liquor. But I hate the taste of liquor. Yeah, I don't like liquor yeah. that much. Speaking of wine. Yeah, a lot of people out there say, or there are studies that show, you know, there there are certain compounds in wine that can be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Specifically, the resveratrol is yes. what it's called, which has an antioxidant effect uh, in the body. But the amount of alcohol, mm -hmm. the amount of red wine specifically that you would have to consume to get any sort of benefit is way bigger <laughs> than the the negative mm -hmm. effects that you're getting from drinking all that wine. Yes, so. Don't think that you're being healthy by drinking red, red wine no. is basically what I'm saying. Don't convince yourself of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah don't convince yourself. It's like, oh, yeah, if I, if I have three bottles of red wine, I'll get enough resveratrol <laughs> that it's healthy. But the three bottles of red yeah. wine has a lot of negative impacts. That, that's a lot of ethanol you're putting into your body. Yeah. A lot of toxins. So a lot of people might be listening to this and be a little scared. And, and the intent is not to scare anyone, just to inform. But is there anything that someone can do to reverse the, the negative impacts that alcohol has on our body. Yes. So specific to the gut, like we talked about, when you're drinking alcohol, it's killing off your bacteria in your gut. So we may need to replenish some of that by one, maybe taking a probiotic mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, ensure you're getting some good prebiotic fiber into your diet, but also consuming some low sugar fermented 
foods can can be beneficial. And we've talked about some of these before, but things like kefir, mm-hmm. which is uh, you know from dairy, fermented dairy products, which contain a lot of good bacteria. Yogurt, also mm-hmm. fermented. Just try to make sure you're getting one that's not pasteurized after the fermentation process. Yep. We've talked about that in a previous episode. And then even things like sauerkraut or uh, kimchi. Oh, yeah, fermented, yeah. Fermented vegetables, fermented cabbage, fermented, uh, yeah, ferment, other fermented foods uh, can help. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah. so they can help restore some of the, the damage done to your gut. Yeah, and reduce some of the inflammation as well. There you go. All right, good to know. Um, okay, let's then dive into specific types of alcohol. So th- at, thus far, we've been talking about alcohol as a whole, but there's still some variety between beer, wine, and liquor. So let's talk about that. Let's And let's start with beer. What, what are the... Just maybe two categories of beer that you see. There's really just organic beer and then non-organic beer. Okay. So most, simple. most beer is going to be non-organic. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's difficult to find organic beer, but I have seen it at Whole Foods before. Oh. Uh, so most beer, like I just said, is conventional beer. It's coming from, most beer is made from uh, barley. Mm-hmm. So uh, a, a grain and it, this this is most of the time heavily sprayed with pest, synthetic pesticides and herbicides, specifically glyphosate. So if you are going to drink beer, and again, I know this is very difficult, yeah. but try to go for organic so you know you're not getting any of those synthetic uh, pesticides and herbicides yep. in your body. Yep. So still something to be thoughtful of there yep. with beer. Okay. So that's beer. Wine. What about wine? So yeah, wine's a tricky one. <laughs> there, There's uh, a few things you have to look for when you're buying wine. And I've yeah. talked about um, a wine before on my Instagram stories, dry farm wines. I'm, oh yeah. I'm sure yeah. You, you've heard of that before, but they're very strict when it comes to the, uh, their, their standards and the, the different vineyards that they source from. Okay. So in the United States, wine producers can add up to 76 different additives in their wine and they don't have to disclose any of that on the bottle. Hmm. So instead you want to look for a brand that uses no additives. Mm. That's the first thing. The second thing is that most bottles of wine can contain 10, 20, 30 grams of sugar in it because they basically shorten the fermentation process before all of the, before it's fully fermented, they'll basically stop, stop the fermentation process to speed up the production and maximize profits. So you want wine that's fully fermented. So this means that the natural yeasts turn all of the sugar naturally found in the grape juice uh-huh. into alcohol. Okay. And this has much, this is literally like, if it's fully fermented, it'll have less than one gram of sugar per bottle. Oh. So, you know, on a, when you're having a glass, you're basically getting no sugar. Right, right. With the, this specific type of wine. Yes, with this specific type of wine. Right. And um, is this added sugar or is it just the sugar no, from the grapes? Yeah, yeah, natural, okay. natural sugar. Yeah. As far as I know, I, I don't, unless yeah. you're getting like, what's the... Barefoot or... Uh... Yeah, there's like there's Riesling. like a sugary there's a sugary type of wine. Yeah, rosé is that sugar? No, nah, well, that's uh, Riesling. Riesling? Yeah, no, no, no. And then the other thing to look for is just organic. Same thing with the mm. with the beer. You don't want to get any any of those synthetic pesticides and herbicides. So look for organic. Organic. Okay. Yeah. So wine is a bit more complicated. It is. Yeah. yeah. But again, like Dry Farm Wines mm-hmm. is a, is a very good brand, and maybe there's another. A couple other good brands as well. We'll we'll leave uh, those names in the description of this episode so yep. you can look. For sure. Okay. That is is wine. The next one we want to talk about is, is almost the new kid on the block here. Seltzers have popped up and gained a lot of popularity. So if you are going to have a seltzer, is there something you should be looking for? Uh, Yeah. So most seltzers out there, like, you know, your, your average White Claw or something mm-hmm. like that, it's normally just alcohol specifically from fermented cane sugar, carbonated water, and natural flavors. Okay. So is it the worst? No, but if you want to avoid those natural flavors, you can go for something like Spindrift, who make a uh, spiked seltzer with alcohol, and then they use natural fruit juice as opposed to natural flavors. So okay. that could that could be a better option. Yeah. And then uh, there's also things popping up now, and we're going to talk about vodka in a second, but vodka seltzers, like mm. High Noon, mm-hmm. uh, is... Um, Vodka and then basically carbonated water and natural flavors. Yeah. And I, I don't know of any vodkas, vodka seltzers that don't use natural flavors, but that's also something you could just kind of make on your own. Yeah. You can get some, some cold pressed fruit juice and there you go. mix it with some vodka. 
That's a good point. You can customize a lot of, of alcohol to what you want. I mean, maybe you're not making your own wine. Right. But we'll talk about mixed drinks here shortly. But something like a a White Claw High Noon equivalent, you can make on your own. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you can make a better version of it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's, that's seltzer. Moving on to liquor then. The one liquor that I hear most commonly as, as the quote unquote best or healthiest type of liquor is vodka. Is, is there any truth to that? Yeah, I, I, I would say yes. If, if, if there's a best type of liquor, but then also just, I think alcohol in general, Yeah, I, I'd probably say vodka. If you're getting a high quality vodka, it's, uh-huh. it's low in calories. Uh, it contains it can, like we talked about. It contains less of these congeners, mm. which is you know a byproduct in the fermentation process. So it tends to contain less, so which is good for uh, hangover purposes. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's naturally gluten free, mm-hmm. unlike beer. Beer is going all, basically all beer is going to contain gluten. It goes through a very long distillation process, which can eliminate a lot of the impurities that are found in vodka. So it's basically you're basically just getting pure vodka. Yeah. So it, it's pure. Yep. So it's, yeah, a little bit, a little bit better for you there for a few reasons. Yeah. So I guess ultimately, if I had to recommend a drink mm-hmm. to have, it would probably be something with vodka in it. So maybe like I just said, cold, like a cold pressed fruit juice, maybe some orange juice with yeah. some vodka, or grapefruit juice, or whatever, yeah. whatever fruit juice. Vodka, you prefer. vodka, with soda water is very popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soda uh-huh. water, yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, it's carbonated water. Yeah, yeah. That's a popular drink. Yeah, so that would be okay. That yeah, that'd probably be your best option. Okay, if you're going to consume alcohol. Yeah, um, but also like if you're if you're just consuming alcohol like myself every once in a while, mm-hmm. maybe just drink what you want to drink. Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, I've I, heard I, like that's my thought. If you're having one to two drinks, maybe three drinks a month, then there's not as much studies done on the damage that that can have on your right, body right um as opposed to again the 7 to 14 a week yeah. that we're comparing it to right which is what our conversation here is focused on exactly yep uh the one thing you mentioned at the beginning was that you have a way to completely get rid of hangovers what is is the the way to have no hangovers yeah so this is my secret tip uh yeah the way to completely eliminate a hangover uh-huh. is to not drink oh. alcohol <laughs> at all. A little trick there. Yeah. So just avoid the alcohol and you won't get a hangover. Yeah. How I, I love waking up without a hangover. <laughs> it's great. Me too. It is yeah. awesome. It's also great when you go out and uh, I, I hope other people can relate to this, but you go out and all your friends get drunk and mm-hmm. drink a lot <laughs> and I don't drink anything. Mm-hmm. And then I wake up and they're hungover and I feel great. Yeah. <laughs> just feel motivated, ready to start yeah. the day. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good feeling. Yeah. I think that's going to be it for this episode of the Clean Kitchen Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this helpful, please go ahead and share it with a friend who maybe drinks a little bit too much alcohol. But again, this is not to scare you. This is just to inform you so you can make better decisions. We will see you next week in episode 23.